right, thanks everyone very much for joining us today on our monthly webinar. Today's webinar, we're gonna talk about uh, some employee retention tips and tricks uh, to get going here. So let's hop right into it. So we all know that turnover is expensive. Uh, we know that we're kind of in that great resignation phase um, you know, of the economy. We're seeing a lot of folks jumping jobs. You know, here's a couple of statistics. You know, it looks like 50 million workers quit their jobs last year and half of workers are looking for something this year. So we know that folks are looking for uh, new work. We know that it's expensive to rehire, to search for new talent. Every time we hire, it costs us more and more and more. Uh, so it's really important that we try to stay on top of retaining the employees we have, keeping them happy. Um, you know, it's and that can sometimes be a full-time job in and of itself. And let's be clear, there's no silver bullet to this, right? Uh, there's no not one thing that's going to keep every employee happy. There's not one thing that's going to make sure that uh, employees don't leave. Um, but there's a lot of things that we can do to try to keep our employees happy and make sure that they don't leave, right, for the competition. So we're going to kind of go through some of those things. So just a quick high-level overview. This is kind of what we're going to go through today a little bit. Um, certainly, we know some of the reasons for turnover. Um, there's not a lot of development opportunity within the organization, whether you're a small organization or you have an older organization or a younger organization that doesn't have a lot of um, a lot of advancement opportunities. We know leadership and management is important, right? Um, there's a statistic out there that says that the majority of the reason that people quit is because they don't like their manager, not because they don't like the job they're doing. They don't like their manager. Um, so those are things that you know we can work on as well. You know, if there's bad working relationships or an environment. There's no work-life balance. The benefits, you know, the money is always the big to hot topic. That's what everyone thinks is the silver bullet too. Uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes people that are the highest paid are the most miserable. So, um, and then certainly there's those situations where, you know, could just be an inadequate fit for your organization. So, um, you know, I was driving down the street uh, in Biddeford last week and there's this sign on the side of the road that says $20,000 sign-on bonus. Um, now this is a, you know, a carrier trucking company they're looking for CDL drivers, very specialized uh, organization. But, you know, it's expensive to find new talent. Now, not only are they doing a huge sign-on bonus, I looked at their website. Um, it's a real deal. They've got all the, you know, the conditions and so forth on there. They're going to give their new employees $20,000 to come on board after a certain period of time and so forth. So, um, you know, that's that's a huge out-of-pocket cost. Not to mention, you're probably going to be paying them more and having better benefits and all the other things that we're going to talk about today. So, um, certainly we know the reasons to keep our employees here. You know, we, we don't want to, you know, training is expensive, you know, in our organization, we plan on at least a six month ramp up for new employees, uh, to get them up to speed and get going. Now, certainly that's not every organization. You may look at, you know, two or three weeks for our hospitality industry, but, um, but it takes time for employees to learn your process, learn how you do business, um, how you like things done, fit into your culture. Uh, that takes time and that's money, right? If you're looking at six months ramp up time where you're not generating any additional capacity or revenue off an employee to get them up to speed, that's huge. Not to mention the time it took you to recruit that person. Uh, so that's that's enormous as well. We know um, that our experienced employees are more productive, right? The people that have been with us for years and years and years are, are have our skills. They know our culture. They know what we're looking for. And and that's a that's a huge savings, right? Um, you know, I hate hiring. So certainly, uh, you know, it saves time for your managers and your HR, you know, to interview, hire, train, uh, get that process done, paperwork, new employee benefits, all that fun stuff takes time. Uh, and that's time that you're not building new business. And, and uh, you know, certainly that's important as well. You know, if there's turnover, if you can't get a good staff, we know that uh, morale suffers from that, right? I mean, the, the few folks that are working hard or making it happen for you, you know, they're going to get frustrated as well and they're going to leave, right? If you can't find good people to fill those roles and they're working harder while the other knuckleheads are slacking off, that leads to bad morale and, and a terrible workplace culture. So we certainly want to try to keep folks, um, you know, on board so we have a good team and everyone can be firing in all cylinders. And certainly, you know, all of these things, we talked about costs and revenue goals. Uh, we want to make sure we're getting the best revenue bang for our buck, maximizing the capacity and the productivity of our employees. And, and certainly when you're turning people over, you're not doing that, right? So again, here are a few different kind of ideas, talking about competitive wage and benefits. Again, money is important, but it's not everything. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about our onboarding process, making sure that from the start, 
Uh, we are um, making sure that our employees have a positive experience when they come in. First impression is the best impression, right? Uh, or potentially the worst, right? So that's important. We want to make sure people have internal growth opportunities. They've got a good work-life balance. Uh, they are, uh, we're engaging and we're recognizing and providing feedback. And, you know, the new, you know, the not new, but the big thing lately is creating inclusivity and, and diversity in your culture. And a lot of these are not even necessarily the hot bucket button political items, uh, but, you know, they're legal items uh, as well and, and HR specific things that are impacting us and recruiting. So let's talk about wage and benefits. We're the payroll company, right? So we see a ton of this and wages are on the rise for sure, right? I mean, we're seeing five to 10% wage increases on average across the board. You know, the days of the two or 3% uh, wage increase are pretty much gone. Uh, you know, inflation is here. We all know what it costs to go to the grocery store. I say it's, you know, for one bag of groceries, it's a hundred bucks now. And certainly our employees are feeling that uh, across the board. And, and we as employers need to be maintaining uh, a good wage increase as well. And that means we have to increase our pricing. And that's ob obviously the hardest thing for us to do in our businesses, but, uh, but again, the cost of everything continues to go up. Our cost of doing business goes continues to go up, including wages and benefits. And we have to account for that because eventually if we can't charge what we need to charge to operate, our customers are not going to be able to use us at all because we're not going to be there to serve them. So, you know, certainly you have to make sure you're competitive in the marketplace. Make sure you're paying well. It's important. Uh, that's a, a fundamental thing. Again, not a silver bullet, but it's a fundamental thing. Um, we see a lot of clients looking at different bonus structures, performance-based bonus or incentive bonuses, um, even for back office or, or non, you know, salesy, commissiony type roles. Um, you know, contests are, are a certain way to do things. Um, if you want to, you know, incentivize a certain activity, we do contests. Um, we see a lot more folks looking at profit sharing programs now, whether that's a profit share through your 401k or just a bonus at the end of the year. Uh, make sure you have some sort of incentive. Um, for the team to do better, right? Um, every industry is different. So that may look differently for every um, industry. We have a number of clients now that are looking at, um, you know, an owner, an employee owned model, right? Um, that's that's huge as well as the every employee uh, is getting a share of that profit, right? Through an ESOP. So those are all different ways to incentivize employees. And, and you know, we, we talked uh, to one client who's in ESOP a couple weeks ago, and it's really important that if you're in that um, you're in that business model, that you have the right culture to go along with that, right? If your employees are quote unquote owners, you kind of have to treat them that way, and that's important to make sure that uh, you're getting getting that message across. So, you know, don't forget about the fringes, right? I mean, everyone thinks you know. Again, we're looking for that silver bullet. What's important to your employees? Is it a wellness stipend or gym membership? Um, any other different you know stipends that they may get? Um, certainly expense reimbursements are important. You know, don't be, you know, skimping out. If your employees are running errands, make sure you pay them mileage and so forth. Um, but, you know, what is important to your employees? Is it that gym membership that's going to make a difference? We'll reimburse you for $50 a month towards gym membership or whatever. Um, are there things that are important? And just think outside the box, right? Um, just, you know, get creative with those. We know that employees want retirement. Everyone is, you know, Everyone's afraid of what's going to happen when they stop working. Today, we're looking for better and better life work-life balance. And that means we all want to retire someday. So um, certainly we're seeing state the state of Maine is, is mandating uh, retirement plans coming next year, right? January 1, that's going to happen for us. Um, so that's something that's going to have to happen for every business with five or more employees. But you don't have to offer the bare minimum. You can offer more than that. And now after Secure 2.0, I'm not going to read through these, but um, there are tax credits that your business can get for offering these retirement plans. Uh, plans. If you're doing a 401k, for example, you have the ability to not even do a match, just allow the employee to contribute. So there's lots of different ways that you can offer retirement and not cost your business money and or just enroll them in the state program. Um, that's going to be the bare minimum going forward. More information to come on that later this year. Um, that's going to be the bare minimum for sure, but we're going to want to make sure that uh, we're offering some sort of retirement plan because that's going to be important to uh, employees. Couple of other, you know, fringe benefit type things. We have section 127 and 132 plans. Well, what are these, right? Um, section 127 plan is an educational uh, benefit, education assistance program. You can reimburse tax-free up to $5,250 per employee for eligible education expenses. And that was recently expanded 
to include student loan payments. So your employee goes to take you know, a class at the community college, you can reimburse them tax-free $52.50 a year for that. You can also give them $5,250 tax-free towards student loan reimbursement. So you can create a Section 127 plan that allows for that. And we're happy to help you with that as well. We look at uh, the 132 plan, that's parking and transit related expenses. So largely commuting related expenses. Uh, you're allowed to do up to $300 a month in that plan. Uh, so we see this a lot in the big cities for folks that have to take the subway or parking is atrocious or any of those types of things. Um, these might be additional benefits that you can offer to your team to try to, to hold on to them. Because certainly we know even in Portland, parking is expensive. So uh, something to think about. Let's talk about that onboarding process, right? I mean, our first impression is the most important. We wanna make sure that we're giving our employees uh, smooth onboarding, good training, we wanna get them up to speed quickly, but make sure that they're comfortable in that. And you know, we see a lot of folks that um, will jump ship. I mean, I heard from a restaurant client just yesterday, they had a new employee start. Uh, they started the training and a half an hour later, he went to the bathroom and never came back. Clearly something went wrong there. Maybe he didn't know what he was getting into. Um, but, you know, was that a process problem? Was that an individual problem? Who knows? Um, but it's important to have some sort of onboarding process, you know, and that starts with using automated tools, right? So help them, you know, serve themselves. But remember, all this paperwork is complicated. W-4s and I-9s and, you know, folks don't know what these are. You know, they don't know how to fill them out. So even if you are using an onboarding process um, electronically, you're probably going to need to help them. You're going to need to explain to them how the I-9 works, what the, how the W-4 works what their direct deposit needs to look like. You're gonna to wanna to sit down and go through the handbook with them, make sure they understand the policies. Don't just let them click sign and be done with it. And you got your signature and you're happy. Uh, make sure that you are um, on the, you know, on the level playing field with that. So when we talk about um, all that paperwork, make sure it's stored, you know, securely and so forth. We wanna make sure we're not out there, um, you know, with employee paperwork everywhere. Make sure you have an employee training plan in place. You know, even for hospitality, make sure you have something written. Make sure your employees know how to train new employees. Make sure you, if you have a designated training person, don't just, you know, let them do what they want to do. Make sure you have a process in place and have benchmarks and and um, and goals for that. Right. Make sure that you know if you say by the end of week one you need to be able to do X, Y, and Z, that they can actually do X, Y, and Z. And make sure you're checking up with those new employees. Do daily, weekly check-ins. Right. Um, you know, we're all coming into this. We're all social creatures. We want to make sure that our new employees are comfortable. When we come into new environments, it's not always the most welcoming. And, and that could be for many reasons, but, um, but we're nervous, right? We're nervous in new situations. It's no different than going to a dinner party and not knowing anybody. You're coming into a new place 40 hours a week that you don't know anybody. Uh, make sure that you're checking in with them. If there's issues, identify them quickly. Don't let them become a problem, right? Um, don't go through all that time and energy getting them hired for them to only walk out a week or two later. That's not good for anybody. Certainly career advancement is important, right? Folks very rarely wanna sit in the same job for 20 years, right? Those days are long gone. Uh, the days of folks working the same job for 20 years or 30 years or more are also long gone. We're seeing fewer and fewer of those folks out there. People are looking for new opportunities. Uh, and if you can give them opportunities within your organization, all the better, right? So if they go from being a back office to a front office person or something like that, um, let them have a new experience. They already know your business, right? If they have the skills to handle that, let them do it. Um, you know, always look at internal candidates first. Make sure you're giving folks that opportunity. If there's someone you think that can do a role, you're creating a new job in your company, is there someone internally that can do that and we can backfill them? Um, I always say, don't hold employees back, right? If you have a, a rock star employee, don't, just because they're great at their job, doesn't mean that, you know, they're going to be great at their job forever. They're going to get bored someday too. You know, give them the opportunity to take something new on. Doesn't mean that they have to completely leave that old role. They may be able to advance in different ways, but um, but folks that come in and know your um, organization or that already know your organization are going to be better candidates for new jobs. Just kind of how it is. So keep that in mind. Put a process in place. A lot of the you know a lot of big corporations have career advancement plans for employees. They write those things down. Um, most of our small business clients aren't going to do that, but. Uh, but have those conversations. Ask your employees, hey, what else do you want to do? Is there anything you don't like doing? Uh, it doesn't have to be anything formal. Just make sure you're uh, having those conversations with your employees because just that they know or that you know what they want to do is a huge step in the right direction, right? So when the opportunity does arise, you can say, hey, look, 
we have this new opportunity coming up. Is this something you'd be interested in? Um, or we have these new tasks that need to be done. Is this something you're interested in? Don't hold people back. Don't let them get bored. That's when they leave. So work-life balance is important to all of us. This is becoming more and more and more and more important. You know, every day um, we're seeing folks that are, you know, don't want to work a 40 hour week. They don't want to work a 30 hour week. Sometimes um, they want to make sure they have the flexibility to pick their kids up at school or go to their soccer games, things like that. Um, so many different things going on. You know, since COVID, we've seen the work from home um, phenomenon like crazy, right? I mean, more and more people want to work from home. Doesn't mean it has to be all the time, maybe something hybrid. Uh, it's all depending on the needs of your organization. And certainly there's some industries where that isn't possible. Uh, but if you have the ability, let them do it. I, I can't tell you the number of employees or employers that have allowed their employees to move to different states. You know, people want to become snowbirds, right? Hey, I'm, you know, approaching retirement. I'd like to spend more time at my camp or in my house in Florida or wherever. Um, and I want to spend six months away from the office here in Maine. And, and I have that ability to do that. Would you let me do it? Um, I have a super, we have a super old school client, very, you know, paper driven. Uh, and one of their longtime employees said, hey, I want to move to the Carolinas. Uh, I want to keep working. I got a few years left, but I want to move to the Carolinas. And I couldn't believe it when they called and said, hey, we have an employee moving to the Carolinas. Uh, you know, and we need to set payroll up for that. So uh, even everybody is is trying to accommodate that. If you are doing work remote, uh, make sure you're following state tax laws. We have all our, our webinar last month was on remote employee compliance. Look that up. We have a whole guide, lots of information to make sure you're in compliance with remote workers. But uh, but it's something that's out there. And, and I think, you know, I'm just as much of an office person as anybody is, but the ability to work from home, even occasionally, is a huge benefit. So just keep that in mind. Think about how you can do that. Flexible scheduling, again, that it may or may not be possible in your industry, uh, but sometimes it's even uh, asking what kind of schedule somebody wants. If you're in a hospitality business, try to accommodate the people that want to work nights or days or weekends or whatever, knowing that sometimes, hey, guess what? You're going to have to work a Saturday night and that is just what it is. But you know, if you want two days off in a row or you want this, work with them on your schedule. Don't be rigid. Say, this is what you are going to work. Um, it's more of a collaborative you know, environment these days than it ever was before. So um, think about that. It doesn't have to necessarily be um, the employee makes their own schedule. It's just communicating to say what schedule works for you um, and how can we accommodate that to get the both the best of both worlds for everybody. You know, we're seeing time off uh, change dramatically. Certainly we have, you know, state mandated minimums now for time off. Uh, but, you know, we're seeing people offer more flexible time off, you know, potentially even up to unlimited time off, depending on the industry and the organization uh, with that. So just think about those kind of things and how we're allowing people for doctor's appointments and dentist appointments and picking up their kids at school and going to watch the soccer game at three o'clock, you know, what can we do? How can we accommodate that to make sure that employees are happy in their jobs? And I'll tell you, you know, honestly, we're seeing um, more and more of that and, you know, it makes a difference. And I'll tell you, those employees that have that flexibility are showing up early. They're working harder than they've ever worked before. Um, and those are, you know, real benefits that we're seeing as well. So. If folks are working extra, you know, don't be afraid to say, okay, why don't you head home early today? You know, I asked you to come in on Saturday to cover this project or something happened. Sure, Friday afternoon, take a couple hours off, enjoy the afternoon. The sun just came out, holy mackerel, for the first time in Maine. All, all here it feels like, um, you know, be flexible with that. You know, reward the employees for working hard uh, and giving them that time. I think that goes a lot longer of a way uh, than much else. So, you know, and certainly, not bothering employees while they're away from the office is, is really important too. The last thing that we all want is to be bothered. Most employees are pretty flexible. Um, we had an employee on, on vacation Thursday, Friday last week, and I had to bug her about something real quick. Quick question, but she was happy to do it. Um, we try not to do that, uh, but certainly, you know, it, it does happen. So. so let's talk about engaging and recognizing and feedback and performance evaluation. You know, those are important. Um, every employee needs a little bit different level of recognition, for sure. Um, you know, everyone is driven differently. Some people are driven by contests and competitions and work, you know, um, and additional money or stipends. Some people are driven by events, you know, after work. Uh, you know, everyone's, everyone is driven by different things, but never miss the opportunity to provide po positive reinforcement and never miss the opportunity to provide constructive feedback. Um, it's only going to be better for everybody. Um, some of the best conversations I've ever had have when, I, when I've gone to an employee and said, hey, listen, 
I know you want to be successful. Why don't we try doing it this way? I know you want to be successful. I need you to try to change the way you're working this or, or whatever you're doing. Um, those constructive feedback conversations sometimes go better than you'd ever even imagine uh, because the employees want to do well as well. It's not like they don't want to do well. Um, you know, and don't forget when they do well to acknowledge it. Um, and sometimes it's a public acknowledgement. I mean, we just had a great story, positive client story um, that we shared all of our social media for one of our employees that she did an amazing job and saved a client $10,000. Um, you know, that's a huge deal and, and made a huge difference with the client and, and deserved that recognition. And certainly we, we give positive feedback all the time um, with that. Don't forget to listen to the employees for feedback too, you know. Um, if you have employees that are giving you feedback on your work environment or how you're doing your running your business, listen, they're the ones doing the work, right? They know what it's what it's like in the trenches. If they're saying this isn't working or so-and-so is being a knucklehead and it's not working well, don't be afraid to listen to them, right? Um, certainly we, you know, you need to take things with a grain of salt sometimes. There's sometimes people maybe whining about things, for example, but if there's legitimate concerns, address them, fix them. Um, that's only going to make it better for everybody, for you and everybody else. You know, managing people is the hardest thing we all do every day. And, uh, but, you know, it's the most important thing we do all day because we couldn't do what we do without the teams that we have. So uh, listen to them both ways. A lot of folks, um, we've seen a lot of clients who are doing a 360 review, right? Not only does the manager review the employee, but the employee reviews their manager. Uh, and that feedback goes up the chain and, and looks, you know, gets to see what, you know, how, how well of a job is that manager doing as a manager? It's not just how well of a job is that employee doing as an employee, right? Um, so, so keep those things in mind as well. Ask for that feedback. Obviously, performance evaluations are really important. Think about those. A lot of folks do them annually. Um, you know, even if it's something informal, right? Hey, you've been, it's your anniversary. We just want to check in with you. Um, here's what our concerns are. Here's what we think you're doing great. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be anything formal. It doesn't have to be a 10 page report. Uh, it could just be a one page bullet, you know, it's with bullets on it. That's all it needs to be. Um, or it could just be a conversation. And again, that's when you get the opportunity to hear that feedback, to hear what the employee wants to do, to hear, um, you know, where they want to go in their career. Don't be afraid to stop and listen uh, and spend that time having those conversations with your employees, right? Um, sometimes you'd be surprised by what you hear. Sometimes you'd be happy by what you hear. Uh, but it's important to have those conversations because we all want to be heard. Nobody wants to be a cog in the wheel. Nobody wants to be a number. Uh, we want to keep our employees happy, growing, and improving. So, so you know, the DEI, the diversity, equity, inclusion um, term is, is kind of the hot button these days. But I think it's certainly important as we continue to recruit folks. Um, we're looking for um, that those opportunities. We want to make sure we're not discriminating um, in general. But there's also things that you can do as an employer that you may not even think about, right? It's, it's making gender, gender neutral references in your handbook. It's making sure that um, you know, you're following all of the laws. Um, there's a lot of real life HR scenarios that are coming about nowadays. Uh, and it's not just about flying the rainbow flag out front. That shouldn't be what it's about. It's about making sure that everyone truly is, is able to work in a safe space uh, and be comfortable and productive for everybody. So um, be sure that you are you know, not discriminating in any way, shape or form. Your employees, your managers are not discriminating. Make sure you're promoting diversity within your organization. Um, we are stronger together for sure. And, um, and you wanna make sure that you're, you know, you're acting in that way. Again, nothing overt needs to happen. You just need to be doing all the right things. Uh, you know, certainly we see it happen on all ends of the spectrum, right? We're seeing you know, the super active you know, corporations that are pushing this type of thing. And we see folks that are just you know, chugging along, doing all the right things, but not, uh, not you know, pounding their chest doing so. But, real life HR issues that are, are out there that, that uh, employers need to be aware of. So. so make sure you're measuring what you're doing, right? We remember there's no silver bullet. We've talked about dozens of different ideas about how to keep your employees happy and, and maybe it's back to basics, right? Um, but check yourself, how are you doing? What you know, metrics do you wanna look at for turnover? What metrics do you wanna look at for productivity? What metrics do you wanna look at for sales and growth and, and things like that? Um, really have some benchmarks for your, your industry and your company to look at, right? Don't be afraid to go back and reevaluate and say, gosh, we had a 20% turnover this year and the year before we only had a 5% turnover. What happened? Why did it happen? And certainly, you know, one of the ways to figure that out is to have exit interviews. 
And, you know, sometimes you may get the feedback that there was something wrong. Uh, other times you may get no feedback at all, or maybe, you know, completely unrelated to you, right? May just be, hey, listen, I've, I've gotten, you know, moving out of state. I want a new job. I want to try something different. I want to whatever. Not anything you did. Uh, it's a completely external source, but it's important to measure that and keep track of it. Certainly make changes to your culture and your policies that are trying to keep employees here, right? Um, sometimes, excuse me, sometimes it's just as much as having lunch in the office for everybody um, or a quick gift card for acknowledgements, contests, something like that. Things that may not cost a lot of money, but um, but make a difference, you know, in the culture and, and so forth. So always make sure you have, you know, have the tools, measure what you're doing. Uh, we want to make sure that you're successful. So that was a quick whirlwind of, of tips and tricks. Don't forget next month, we're going to talk about features of iSolve. You may not know you had access to. That's coming up July 18th. Get registered for that. Don't forget on the resources page, we have our blog, which is updated weekly with different questions and uh, timely uh, updates. We just had a new main law uh, not, you know, for tipped employees that we posted about on the blog. Uh, obviously, all of our webinars are posted there on our help pages. You know, we have login help information, how to use iSolve, how to get through my HR stuff. Um, how does that all work? We want to make sure that we're uh, helping you be successful in every way that we can. So I'm happy to take any questions. Certainly, as usual, we will be saving this, posting this on uh, our YouTube page. We'll send out a follow-up uh, in the next day or so with a link to this in the presentation so you can reference it anytime. But feel free to ask any questions that you may have either in the chat or the uh, Q&A section. And always feel free to reach out to us directly if there's anything we can help you with too. I'm not seeing anything right off, but of course, if you have questions going forward, please feel free to you know, reach out to us offline. We'll be happy to get in touch with you. Certainly, we look forward to chatting with you next month at our next month webinar, Features of iSolved You Didn't Know You Had. Uh, and we will talk to you then. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much.